All those having business for the Honorable Elizabeth L. Gunn, Judge of the United States District and Bankruptcy Courts in and for the District of Columbia, now holding this naturalization ceremony, will draw nine, give their attention. God save the United States of America and this Honorable Court. Please remain standing for the presentation of the colors, the singing of the national anthem, and the retirement of the colors. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of and the home of the brave. Oh. Please be seated and come to order. This honorable court is now in session. Good morning. Uh, I am so very honored to be here participating in the naturalization ceremony today. Uh, what you might not know is that we have something in common. Despite being appointed to the bench over three years ago, today is also my first naturalization ceremony. So we will get through it together. Although it's my first ceremony, judges from the District of Columbia District Court have presided over these ceremonies for many years, and each who participates learns, as I'm learning today, how amazing an event this is. People from all over the world, we have 25 nations represented here today, who have worked so hard to attain citizenship, family members and supporters here to celebrate with them, to gather to celebrate today. I'm overcome by how impressive all your accomplishments are to get here today, and I already consider this one of my favorite bonuses of being a judge. However, today's ceremony is not a typical naturalization ceremony. We are surrounded here by documents that establish this country and our system of government, including the Declaration of Independence, issued on July 4th, 1776, declaring the, our independence from Great Britain, and the reason why, just behind us on the mall, we celebrate with an unrivaled fireworks display every year. The Constitution is also housed here in the archives, 
the document which establishes our system of government and the three branches, legislative, executive, and judicial, and perhaps most fittingly for today in the ceremony, the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution and the, uh, which protect individual rights, including freedom of speech, religion, and the press, and the freedom from warrantless searches and seizures. What an honor for me and for you to participate and conduct this ceremony today here, surrounded by the history of our nation. And now the deputy clerk will call the roll. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court, when your name is called, please stand and answer here or present and remain standing. Niga Weleta Kokole, Ethiopia. Shi Lan, China. Crystal Jeodu Jimine, Cameroon. Robert Thomas Strout, United Kingdom. Veronica Sonia Tayado Molotava Toledo. Peru. Anne Morelle Bernardin, Haiti. Carlos Javier Vaca Vavari, Bolivia. Christopher Owen Richards, Australia. Alvaro Antonio Borzet, El Salvador. Christopher Winston Scipio, Trinidad and Tobago. Cristobal Victoriano Catac, Guatemala. Catherine Saragentu, Saragentu Vong Yasuk, Philippines. Arsala Morade. Afghanistan. George Nakam Akalum Alili, Nigeria. Dinesh Parabahari, Sri Lanka. Craig Reese Rawlings, South Africa. Radmila Popovich, Serbia. Carla Fernanda Sepavila Garcia, Mexico. Nadhimi Jadari, France. Sharman Akhtir, Bangladesh. Dominique Felipe Van de Waal, Belgium. Ronald Arlington Ferreira. Guyana. Pierre Jerry Fessal, Senegal. Alessandro Stabile, Italy. Friedrich Hans Luz, Germany. Your Honor, there are 25 applicants for naturalization. Each of the applicants have been examined by the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service, and the government has completed its investigation in each case. It has been determined that each applicant is eligible for naturalization at this time. I move that upon taking the oath of allegiance to the United States of America, each applicant present, having answered to his or her name, to include those prayers for name change, be granted naturalization as citizens of the United States of America. Thank you, the motion is granted. If you could raise your right hand and repeat the oath of allegiance. I hereby declare, on oath, that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure 
all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state or sovereignty, of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen that I will support and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law, and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. Congratulations. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everyone, please be seated. Please welcome students from MacArthur High School who will recite the preamble to the U.S. Constitution. ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Please be seated. Please welcome to the stage the Archivist of the United States, Dr. Colleen Shogan. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and the newest members of our American family, welcome to the National Archives. I would like to thank the students from MacArthur High School who wonderfully recited the preamble to the Constitution and Judge Gunn for administering the oath of citizenship. You just pledged support to the Constitution, which is directly behind me, but today I want to focus my attention to the document to my left, the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments to our Constitution. Today is Bill of Rights Day, which commemorates the adoption of these amendments 232 years ago. These amendments protect our most fundamental rights that are guaranteed to all Americans, freedom of speech, the press, and religion, 
the right to petition our government, and equal protection under the laws. Franklin Roosevelt proclaimed the first Bill of Rights Day in 1941 to commemorate the great American charter of personal liberty and human dignity. He reminded us to not take these rights for granted and asked that the day should rededicate its principles and its practice. Along with the Declaration of Independence, to my right, these three founding documents are a testament to the enduring values of freedom, justice, and equality that we continuously strive to perfect. They are living promises, a covenant between the government and its citizens. You are now part of that promise, and as Americans, these documents belong to you. Here at the National Archives, we preserve, protect, and share the billions of records we hold in trust to this great nation. We do this to cultivate public participation and to strengthen our democracy. We live in an era in which the world around us is filled with division and disagreement. There is a time and a place for debate in a democracy. In fact, the father of our Constitution, James Madison, believed that such conflict was healthy for our governing institutions. But this rotunda serves as a different place, a democratic oasis where we can come together and celebrate the principles that unite us as Americans. As archivist of the United States, I am committed to ensure that the National Archives remains a trusted resource for all Americans, regardless of creed, belief, or opinion. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, who knows what a naturalization ceremony means firsthand. Melania Trump is our only first lady in American history who is also a naturalized citizen. Born in Slovenia, Mrs. Trump immigrated to the United States, and in 2006, she joined us as a fellow American. As First Lady, Mrs. Trump was a strong advocate for our nation's youth. I had the privilege of working alongside her on several initiatives, including the centennial anniversary of the 19th Amendment. This amendment, of course, removed voting restrictions for women based upon their sex. Mrs. Trump eagerly supported the work we did on the Federal Commission to celebrate that centennial. When I became the chair of the foundation to build a federal memorial in Washington, D.C. to commemorate the suffragists, she was the first former First Lady to agree to serve as an honorary co-chair. I am very grateful for the help and the enthusiasm she has provided to those of us who are working to elevate the important stories of American women. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Melania Trump and congratulations to our new citizens. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Shogun, for your introduction and for your kind invitation to celebrate this incredible moment. Thank you, Judge Gan, for leading the Oath of Alliance. MacArthur High School students, you are the future leaders, and knowing the meaningful words of our Constitution's preamble will empower you in the the next chapters of your life. It is my privilege to share this great nation, America, with you. Throughout our lives, we cross thresholds, and all thought, obstacles often stand in the way of our goals. We persevere as we understand that conquering them will provide great access to personal development, fulfillment, 
and even eventually self exaltation For me, reaching the milestone of American citizenship marked the sunrise of certainty. At that exact moment, I forever discarded the layer of burden connected with whether I would be able to live in the United States. I hope you are blanked it with similar feelings of comfort right now. Finally, I could plan all of the aspects of my life. I recall feeling a tremendous sense of pride and belonging after I recited the United States Oath of Alliance, as the pathway to citizenship is arduous. I was born and raised in the picturesque country of Slovenia, where my parents taught me the importance of a strong work ethic and pursuing my dreams. The values they installed in me at an early age inspired my fashion and modeling career and brought me to the beautiful cities of Paris and Milan. While working internationally had its share of rules and regulations, it wasn't until I moved to New York City in 1996 that this system truly tested my determination. Upon my arrival, I immediately knew that I wanted to make the United States my permanent home. With the goal of securing a worker visa, I began researching, visiting consulates and embassies, and then compiling the required records of my work experiences. Quickly, my life turned into a labyrinth of organizing paperwork. Back then, the convenience of technology's document filing didn't really exist to the extent it does today. Patience and perseverance became my constant companions as I navigated through this intricate web, which I'm sure you can all relate to. Even if every time consuming, my dream of becoming a citizen pushed me to meticulously gather every last piece of information required, ensuring that no detail was overlooked. My personal experience of traversing the challenges of the immigration process opened my eyes to the harsh realities people face, including you, who to try to become US citizens. And then, of course, there are nuances of understanding the United States immigration laws and the complex legal language contained therein. I was very devoted, but I certainly was not an attorney. And eventually, it pro provided critical for me to, to retain counsel. I was fortunate to do so, as ultimately my journey was streamlined and brought me over the finish line as a naturalized citizen. While challenges were numerous, there were rewards were well worth effort. I applaud you for every step you took, every obstacle you overcome, and every sacrifice you made. It is an honor to stand with you in these hollow halls today in the presence of the Declaration of Independence, the very document on which our founding fathers carefully composed the words that capture the ideals surrounding individual liberty and this great republic. Arguably, one of the most important documents of all time. Becoming an American, citizen comes with responsibility. It means actively participating in the democratic process and guarding our freedom. It also means leading by example and contributing to our society. It is a life-altering experience that takes time, determination, and sometimes even tremendous strength. You are now a part of a nation with a rich history of progress, 
innovation and resilience. Though you co come from 25 different countries, your dreams and inspirations intertwine with those who came before you since 1776 and together shape the future of this extraordinary country. Be proud of yourself, stand your ground, and embrace the opportunities that lie ahead. You are American. Be a beacon of inspiration for your children and those who follow in your footsteps. May your journey continue to be filled with endless possibilities and may your contributions enrich the fabrics of this great nation. Congratulations again. Thank you. Please welcome to the podium the Honorable Elizabeth L. Gunn. Thank you, Mrs. Trump. Aside from the Native Americans and the members of the First Nation, the United States is a nation of immigrants. Everyone's family came from somewhere else. So as of today, when you walk out this, this beautiful facility, walk down the street, get into the metro, you are no more of an immigrant and no less of an American than anyone you see. Anyone in this city or anyone who lives anywhere in this great country, you are no less. Let me tell you a few facts about my family in closing. My great-grandmother on my mother's side arrived on Ellis Island, and my great-grandfather jumped ship, not quite before they got there, around the time of the, end of the Great Depression from Greece. They went on to raise 13 children in the northeast a part of the country, one of whom sacrificed his life fighting during World War II, after whom my mother is named. One became a New York City police detective, one a college professor, and one my grandmother. Just over 100 years later, I was appointed as a federal judge serving in the capital of our great country. On the other side, my great-grandmother on my father's side was one of the last uh, on one of the last wagon trains migrating west across this country on the Oregon Trail. And despite that, she still lived to the great age of 100. After establishing a homestead in Oregon, among her great-grandchildren are doctors, lawyers, activists, teachers, and one judge. Each of us has a short story to tell, and I hope your children and your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your aunts, uncles, cousins, whomever, will tell stories of you and this day and that make their future lives in America possible. So thank you all for sharing your special day with me, each and every one of you. Congratulations, my fellow Americans. This honorable court is now adjourned. Right now, I want everyone to please stay seated as we present the certificates to my new American brothers and sisters. Please remain seated for the presentation of the certificates.
the official party. This concludes today's naturalization ceremony. Please follow our volunteers to the reception room. To see photos of today's event, please visit the link featured in your program.